Yes, from high above Times Square with a bunch of bikini-clad girls dancing behind us now on the beach. Welcome to the uh, program. My name is uh, Glenn Beck. I'm, I'm glad you're here. We want to uh, take you back to the Yale professor. Um, this is the, uh, he is the, what, what do they call it, the Distinguished Professor of the Year yes. or Cub Scout of the Month, or I don't know what he was, but um, a Distinguished Professor at Yale. He is. Uh, he was delivering a lecture and then pulled off to the side and asked, uh, "Hey, can we have a conversation about that one again?" You said some interesting things about Obama. Would you mind? Yeah. Uh, could you would expanding you... on that a little bit? Now, I'm sure this man is going to be discredited, and, and you know, by the end of the day, um, he's clearly senile. Yeah. Oh, he's, well, he's oh, he's so clearly, old. He's, and, you know, how old does he look? He looks like sixty. I don't know. He's probably 173, 174. Yeah, he's a very young looking 174. Yeah. Um, distinguished pref- professor at Yale. Here's what he said about Barack Obama. Is really a revolutionary. That doesn't mean he's looking to stir up violent trouble, but I believe that he is trying to transform both the American um, political system and economic system and America's relationship to the world. I also believe that um, he has decided that America must make its peace with Iran. I believe that uh, he is a man who is highly intelligent, knows what he's doing, and in spite of the fact that uh, he has attracted liberal Jewish supporters, some with great wealth, uh, his intention is to uh, correct the historical mistake of the creation of the state of Israel. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, Given Obama's background, the fact that his family was uh, on his father's side was Muslim, that his sister is a Muslim, that his uh, half-brother is a Muslim, Uh, there is no doubt that he heard a great deal about Islam and Israel from them uh, before he um, took office, and though he was not candid about it at first, he has by his decisions and his uh, symbolic actions uh, made it clear where his sympathies are. Okay, stop for a second. Stop stop for a second. That's, That's an awful lot to digest here. From a distinguished professor at Yale who will soon be discredited as a crackpot. He has made his intentions clear, which I think are clear. I think any human, any thinking human being can see, agree or disagree, can see where this man stands. They know. He does not stand with Israel. He does not stand with our traditional allies. He is on a different side. Now, that that side could be right, could be wrong. That's for you to decide. But it's not the traditional, hey, ah, this is our traditional enemy and this is our traditional friend. It's not. The guy can't find anything to, no reason to sit down and meet with the president of BP, the CEO of BP. They have nothing to talk about. Quote, guys like that are just going to tell you what you want to hear. But he'll meet with Ahmadinejad with no conditions. I mean, how's it working out? Really, seriously, how's it working out with North Korea? North Korea torpedoes a ship and sinks it. We do nothing. We do nothing. Israel tries to stop a ship from approaching a secure area. Egypt says don't approach. Egypt says you can land at one of our ports, but you are not to go into the uh, the Gaza Strip. Land at one of our ports and we will search you. No. So it's not just Israel, it's Egypt as well. That's not reported. And what happens? For the first time, the United States comes against Israel. I'm not claiming that Israel is right on everything. Although I do believe they are the 
They're the victims in this situation, uh, although I'm not one looking for victims. I mean, Israel's a big, you know, they're big boy and big girl. They can take care of themselves. But let's at least stand on the, the side of our friends, the ones we have more in common with. But now here's somebody in, in an academic level that is saying he's making himself clear. But he goes even further. Listen. Doubt that he would not be unhappy to see the destruction of the state of Israel as long as he can say that uh, my hands have not shed this blood, which is a phrase from the Bible. Uh, Absolutely. In addition to that, he has a hostility towards Western Europe, uh, especially to England, uh, as characterized by the symbolic action of returning the bust of Winston Churchill to the English, one of his mm. first acts. And uh, wow. he has made some uh, interesting symbolic moves with, um, uh, for example, bowing to King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, since King Abdullah is the keeper of the two holiest shrines of Islam, Mecca and Medina, one wonders why uh, he did this. I mean, well, but you have to, he also uh, bowed to Pam Iorio, the mayor of Tampa. So, yeah, the bowing thing, I don't know. He's just got weird. a bowing issue. <laughs> yeah, he he just has a bowing issue. <laughs> he has an issue with flies that land on his face, and he has a bowing issue. I don't know. I don't know what either one of them mean. It's interesting, though, that he uses, you know, he talks about the relationship with England, which I think has really been compromised by this president. And he uses the same example that you brought up many times. And that's we packed up the bust of Churchill that was given to us after 9-11 and sent it right back to him. Well, is there even any, though they said, no, that was a gift. Is there any? Is it, I mean, let's let's be honest here. Stu, open up the control room mics. Let, let, let's let's brainstorm here for a second. Tell me an honest reason why you would do that to a friend. Clashes with the decor. 